हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू स्टडी आईक्यू आईएएस इंग्लिश एंड आई होप दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग रियली ग्रेट बट समहाउ द वेदर ऑफ डेली एन सी आर इज नॉट डूइंग ग्रेट बिकॉज यू नो आई थिंक लास्ट सिंस टू एंड हाफ आवर्स इट हैज बीन रेनिंग कंटिन्यूसली एंड विथ लॉर्ड्स एंड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ डिफिकल्टी आई हैव बीन एबल टू रीच टू द स्टूडियोज सम हाउ सो मेक इट श्योर दैट इफ यू हैव ज्वाइन द सेशन सो डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू कंटिन्यू टिल द वेरी एंड because uh, the session has started a little bit late but i hope that uh, this is the first and the last time that we are coming late okay because of the why because of the weather conditions obviously so very good evening everybody those who are live with, with me in the session so good evening everyone good evening aisha abhishek rishi and uh, good evening uh, mantasha pragya good evening to all of you and uh, guys do not forget to share this uh, session with your friends as well so that they can also watch it live along with all of us because in today's lecture we are going to start the combined in fact we can say the we can say that a cumulative approach we are going to take for the ancient history part in fact if we observe if we observe the trends of last few years like it has been very difficult very tricky situation because uh, usually it is very difficult to assess the trends in the upsc however if we talk about 2020 onwards okay 2020 onwards there are right we have seen the increasing numbers of okay increasing numbers of the questions from ancient from ancient and medieval and medieval parts of history okay so till now everybody was doing just the modern history and was thinking that the history syllabus is over or only this much is history but uh, today we will be focusing a little bit on the part which we have often ignored so now talking about uh, <coughs> right talking about the subject of the history but before that let me tell you one important thing that here we are actually offering the students who are aspiring for 2024 civil services examination by upsc so for them there is a p2i batch the prelims to interview batch where we are providing you a comprehensive program consisting of the general studies mains preparation interview preparation along with the you know textbooks that will be provided current affairs part mock test practice papers everything will be given it will be a duration of 15 months for which this program will be running and guiding all of the students but all these things will be given at a cost of rupees 29999 given that if you are using this code asr live and one special thing if you are registering it by tomorrow then you are going to get a special book written by the very senior bureaucrat anil swaroop sir and this book will be telling you about the mindset the right mindset of a civil servant now so moving to the right moving to the topic now when i talk about the topic okay so first of all if i am talking about the topic so let us understand the relation between geographic development and history relation between geographic development and history those who have seen the ncrts this is the first part that we study in the ncrt those who have seen the tamil nadu text by tamil nadu board textbook this is the first part which we study in the tamil nadu board textbook as well all right everyone uh, pranam purushottam ji welcome to the session so here if we look at this map beautifully right this is, map is a very beautiful map of our country it shows the mountainous region okay mountains this part is basically this part is basically the indo gangetic plains this is the indo gangetic plains all right and this portion this portion is basically the central highlands okay this is central highlands we can also call it as the plateau or the plateau so apart from that there are the coastal regions the coastal regions which are extremely right fertile 
फर्टाइल एंड एंड दे प्रोवाइड द दे प्रोवाइड द बेस्ट ट्रेडिंग राइट ट्रेडिंग रूट्स एंड पोर्ट्स रूट्स एंड पोर्ट्स सो दैट इज बेसिकली द कोस्टल पार्ट ऑल राइट सो बिफोर वी कुड स्टार्ट बिफोर वी कुड स्टार्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द हिस्टोरिकल कंटेक्सट ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आई थिंक एवरी सीरियस स्टूडेंट मस्ट बी अवेयर अबाउट द जियोग्राफिकल फीचर बिकॉज लेट मी टेल यू लेट मी टेल यू दैट द हिस्ट्री ऑफ एनी पर्टिकुलर प्लेस इज डिटरमाइंड बाय इज डिटरमाइंड बाय द फैक्टर्स ऑफ जियोग्रफी ऑफ दैट एरिया फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्ट दैट इट वुड बी ईजियर फॉर द ह्यूमन बींग्स टू ट्रांसपास टू क्रॉस द हिमालयाज एंड टू ट्रेवल टू तिब्बत और टू चाइना राइट वेयर एज इफ वी लुक एट द नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न पार्ट वेयर देयर आर द प्रेजेंस राइट देयर आर द प्रेजेंस ऑफ पासिस देयर इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ पासिस सो दीज पासिस प्रोवाइडेड द क्लियर राइट क्लियर पाथवे for the travelers to travel across the indian subcontinent and the northwestern northwestern parts so this is why whosoever whosoever came to india or invaded india good evening anupur invaded india they always chose the path of northwestern northwestern passes northwestern passes similarly all of us might have heard right all of us might have heard about the story of ashoka attacking the kaling how many of you have not heard this story that ashoka was a great king who had attacked the state called kaling if you look at the position right if you look at the position of the state right state called kaling here so you can understand it very well that uh, this part this part where ashoka is ruling okay and kaling is located somewhere in this area and at the same time you can also understand that ashoka was having a close relation with the close relation with the lankan islands also they were trying to pursue their trading practices in the coastal areas because the coastal areas were they were flourishing they were flourishing to become the to become the trade centers as i told you that coastal areas they provide the good opportunity for the trading purpose right now so it was probably essential for ashoka look according to the geography that if he wanted to reach to the coastal area so this was essential to capture this particular land why because this entire area was hilly area it was all high land and due to being the high land this area was surrounded by the dense forest and that is why it was not very easy to cross that forest rather it was easier to take the coastal route and reach to these areas conveniently right now so we can say that geographical features have always decided a major part or played a major part in deciding the historical developments now if we talk about okay if we talk about the relation between the geographical settings and the historical development so let me tell you one thing geographical settings that means the topography and the relief what is the topography and the relief topography and the relief means the setting of the setting of the land the setting of the particular territory how is the land right how is the height of the land how is the slope of the land are there any mountains rivers trenches right all these physical features physiographic features if we study those physiographic features then we call it as the topography and the height is called as the relief all right everyone so this topography and relief it determines the rainfall winds and climate for example the structure of himalayas present in the north of india that decides the monsoon climate of the indian subcontinent if himalaya was not there there would not have been any any monsoon climate in india probably the winds coming from the central asia northern asia those 
cold winds coming from the North Pole, they might have penetrated, they might have entered into the Indian subcontinent and therefore they would have completely frozen the country with the, with the cold. So this is why we can say the topography and the relief of the particular place, it decides the rainfall, winds and therefore the climate. Similarly, we can take the example, for example, suppose you belong to Tamil Nadu. You belong to Tamil Nadu. If you belong to Tamil Nadu, the entire region of Tamil Nadu is in the tropical zone. Tropical zone means in the warm temperature zone, hot temperature zone. Despite being in that tropical zone, the place called Uti or Udag Mandalam in Tamil Nadu, even Mount Abu in Rajasthan, Pachmadhi in Madhya Pradesh, these are the places which are lying in the tropical or high temperature zones. Despite lying in the high temperature zones, due to the relief, due to the height, these places have a little bit cool temperature which clearly tells us the importance of the importance of the topography and the relief to decide the climate of any particular place any particular place after that the climate and the rainfall and the winds they decide the type of the soil vegetation and wildlife we are all aware about one thing that the rainfall that decides the nature of erosion, right, nature of erosion and deposition. So basically the formation of soil, the formation of soil, what is soil? Soil is basically the fragmented, broken and completely shattered pieces of the rocks which eventually turn into the, eventually turn into the fine particles and they are called soil, right? So, when we are considering a particular place, the soil of that particular place is always decided by the nature of climate. The amount of, amount of the sunshine the place is receiving, the amount of rainfall the place is receiving. Therefore, the type of soil is different in Rajasthan as compared to Meghalaya. It is different in Jammu Kashmir as compared to Chhattisgarh. Right now. Why? Because the different places have got the different climates, okay, and that is why different climates means different soil. Different soil means different vegetation and different vegetation means what? Different wildlife, different wildlife. Now the thing is to understand that how does the different vegetation or how does the different wildlife decides the different pattern of habitat. Now let us understand one thing. Suppose if I tell you that uh, where it will be easier, right, where it will be easier to live in a cave, live in a cave, in the Gangetic Plains or in the Deccan Plateau. Tell me guys, yes, tell me the answer that where are you supposed to find the caves, rock cut caves in the Gangetic Plains or in the Deccan area? Tell me. So I hope that all of you would agree to this point that the Deccan Plains are more likely to have the rock cut caves or simply the caves. Why? Because of the presence of the presence of the big boulders, rocks, stone pieces, mountains, etc. Because the Gangetic Plains, they are supposed to have the soil which is fertile, plain and that is why the forest will be much more dense forest, much more dense forest, isn't it? And when there is a dense forest, it is difficult for anybody to live in that dense forest because the earliest human beings, they were not having the enough resources to cut down those forest areas. Now I hope you will get the answer. If suppose anybody has the question in the mind that why do we find the earliest human settlements in India in the hilly areas, in the foothills of the Himalayas, in the Deccan region, Vindhya region, Satpura region, Nilgiri region. Why all these you know, mountainous regions, why do these areas have, why do these areas have the earliest settlement? It is because, 
it is because the plains had extremely dense vegetation which was not suitable for the habitat of the earliest human beings. Okay, everybody, I hope you got the clear understanding of this. So, when the habitat is determined, the habitat also decides the development extent and the socio-cultural and economic life. How does it happen? For example, suppose I am living in the metro city, then my level of uh, you know, my level of living or standard of living will be different from the person who is living in a remote place. If the person is living in the village area, he will be getting the healthier food as compared to or much uh, cleaner food or water as compared to the person who is living in the urban areas, isn't it? So, definitely the development of the socio-cultural and economic life that depends upon the pattern of the habitat and let me tell you that these developments, these developments, these changes, these interactions, the interaction between, the interaction between the two different factors in the time space, in the time space, that is called, that is called history if it is recorded, it, if it is recorded. For example, I am here and this uh, building is here. So, whatever interaction took place between me and this building, for example, I used to work at this building, I have constructed this building or this building used to be my house, whatever interaction, any type of interaction. The record of this interaction is called history. So, history will, history will say that the Abhishek used to live in that particular house or Abhishek used to work at that particular office. This is the history, right? Now, similarly, the early human beings also used to live at a particular place, used to do a particular activity, right? Used to uh, use the different resources draw the pic, draw the pictures, got it? So, these factors of change, right, these activities are, these activities are determined by several factors of changes. What is the meaning of the factor of changes? For example, one factor of change, right, one factor of change, that is uh, the time. Another factor of change, that may be any important innovation, any important innovation or any important discovery. For example, iron. Iron is a very, very important factor of change. How is the iron very important factor of change? Because iron, it entirely changed the way, the change the method which in which the people were living before discovery of iron and after discovery of iron. For example, the iron axis the iron axis. Axe means, what is the axe? You all must have seen this type of weapon. This type of weapon. Right now. So, this is, this is called an axe. So, this weapon, it was suppose made up of the iron. Okay, iron. So, the iron axis, they completely changed the, the change the pattern of expansion of the human population the people started burning the forest and they started cutting the they started cutting the forest areas similarly if you have seen right if you have seen you can also get you can also add suppose this is a tool okay this is a tool got it everyone now you all might have seen you all might have seen this tool right what is this tool called as what is this tool called as? This tool is called as a plow. It is called as a plow. Suppose, can you, can you not say that? Can you not say that the agriculture can be categorized into two different time periods? One when, one when before discovery of, before the discovery of plow and the second after the discovery of plow, after discovery of plow, isn't it? So, we can, we can categorize the agriculture into two different aspects. 
सो एनी थिंग एनी थिंग विच हैपन्स इन द हिस्ट्री डेफिनेटली देर आर सर्टन फैक्टर्स विच कंप्लीटली एक्ट एज द डिवाइडर ऑफ द डिवाइडर ऑफ द हिस्ट्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ब्रिटिश एडवेंट इन इंडिया द ब्रिटिश और द यूरोपियन एडवेंट इन इंडिया दैट completely divided the indian history in before the european adventure and after the european adventure right arrival of vasco da gama isn't it so there are different types of the factors of change different types of the factors of change which completely decide the direction of the history and not just that these factor of change decide the direction of the history which means they completely affect the socio economic and cultural life and the study of these factors and the changes occurring due to those factors that is called as history that is called as history right everybody so we can have the examples of the relationship between the geographical features and the historical developments like the presence of himalayas it has completely determined the climate of the indian subcontinent and at the same time this climate has been a big factor in deciding the historical developments in india similarly the presence of the old fold mountains and the old plateaus now these mountains and these plateaus in the central india in the deccan region they have completely they have completely affected the historical development in that area because of these old mountains old plateaus the early human beings got the stone due to which they were able to develop the stone tools these old areas provided the earliest settlement sites for the early human beings due to which their entire community started to develop and we find the we find the development of the human settlements earliest human settlements in the vindhya region satpura region etc etc right now telegram name bhaskar mandal telegram name in fact uh, i have just uh, told in the beginning itself at the end also i will be telling you telegram link don't worry then we have got the indo gangetic fertile plains so these fertile plains have also played a major role suppose if these plains were not fertile if these plains were not fertile can you expect can you imagine the development of the magadh as an empire can you imagine the growth story of the second phase of urbanization can you consider the possibility of the 16 mahajanpadas definitely there is no possibility if these areas were not fertile in the nature right and one most important thing the very 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 important thing end of the pleistocene and the start of the holocene what is the meaning of this pleistocene holocene etc if we do not go into the depth of these terminologies but just we need to understand that if we consider this time period as present time period which is the time period p and this is the point number o this is point o which is the beginning right beginning period so we can categorize we can categorize the complete time duration of the life of the earth into different into different time zones or different time periods okay these time periods are called as these time periods are called as the geological time scale geological time scale all right everybody so this geological time scale the very very last time scale if we are talking about the very last time scale so here we have the and we have the pleistocene and holocene pleistocene and holocene upsc had asked a question upsc had asked a question related to the meghalayan age related to the meghalayan age why had they asked a question related to the meghalayan age because this meghalayan age was in the news because this signifies the this signifies the time period of the 4200 years ago right and this indicates the relative relatively dry season or dry 
climate relatively dry climate okay so the relatively drier climate is determined by the meghalayan age meghalayan age but before that when was the exact time that the temperature of the earth that started increasing and till today we are seeing the increase in the temperature if you study history and geography properly you will get the idea that currently earth is under the increasing phase the like growing phase of the temperature that is why we are facing the increasing temperature yes it is obviously correct that the human interventions have resulted into the much faster rate of temperature growth okay everybody so that is very important to understand so pleistocene was basically called as the ice age and the end of the ice age resulted into the developments of the grasslands development of the grasslands why so because we all are aware that when the ice is melting from any particular place what is the first thing that will grow obviously grasses will grow okay grasses will grow and after the growing of the grasses what will happen the population of the herbivores that would automatically automatically increase resulting into the development of you know successive species and therefore the pattern of living the pattern of existence of the human beings that will also change the warm climate conditions will support agricultural developments getting the point here everyone warm climatic changes they would support the agricultural developments and due to the agricultural developments what will happen the human life that would start converting into a converting into a sustainable or you know a sustainable uh, manner and that sustainability will provide the stability to the human settlements this stability will result into what this stability will result into the growth of society society will be having a culture and culture with with the civilizational development that will create the phase of cultural civilization so i hope that you all got a clear idea that how does how does the geographical setting it decides the or determines the historical developments we understood from the very beginning up to the development of society culture and civilization is anybody having any questions yes everyone anybody is having any questions or queries please do ask it all right okay so if you are having question kindly mention in the chat box then let us understand the earliest human evolution in india so the history can be divided into three categories on the basis of the types of evidences obtained so history is basically a historical time period that could be divided into three distinct phases number 1 the prehistoric time number 2 proto historic time and number 3 the historic time okay how do we decide the prehistory proto history right prehistory proto history or uh, historical time period right now so basically what is the meaning of prehistory what is the meaning of prehistory bhaskar kindly pay attention and you will understand it very very clearly because because i have not defined the timeline yet at the end of the session i also have provided the timeline right and you will understand everything completely clearly from that place got it everyone so what is the prehistory prehistory is when there is no written or literary evidence only the archaeological evidences are found only archaeological evidences are found got it so bhaskar i am just telling you one thing that uh, since the beginning of the time period which is called the geological cycle obviously the age of the earth okay since the beginning of that particular time there have been the constant changes which are occurring and around uh, 11000 years ago there was a major change that is the end of the ice age the ice age was called pleistocene the end of the ice age resulted into the warm temperatures and the warm temperatures supported the crop production plant growth 
and due to which the human beings they started living a sustainable source right sustainable way of life resulting into the formation of the societies cultures and all i hope you got it vaskar now what is prehistory when we have no written sources we have only archaeological sources the meaning of archaeological sources means what archaeological source that means that means we have the materials we have the tools we have the objects right products something which is uh, tangible we have that okay we have that pottery cloths okay utensils food grains right bones teeth hair body dead body burials all these are called as the archaeological evidences got it everybody what is the proto history right so if we talk about the prehistory we don't have any settled or civilized life we don't have any settled or civilized life but if we talk about the proto history we have the we have the settled and civilized life evidences of the settled and civilized life all right everyone okay no no it's okay bhaskar it's okay so here in the proto history we have the literary as well as the archaeological sources that means there are the availability of written sources right written sources as well as the archaeological or the material sources but we don't have the understanding of the written sources we are unable to read what is written there we are unable to read what is written there right everyone yes anjali not mug up but uh, completely understanding the book is very very essential now if we talk about the uh, if we talk about the use of metal or uh, use of the stones or the animal husbandry all these things are present all these things are present but these things they indicate that this phase of history was developed but we are unable to understand the development because of inability right because of our inability to understand the literary sources now what is history the history is basically the presence of both archaeological and literary evidences not just the archaeological and literary evidences there are also the there are also the cross right cross verifying resources for example the numismatics is there okay numismatics is there what is the meaning of this numismatics numismatics means the study of the coins the study of the coins so we have the evidences of the coins okay then apart from that the travelogues are there okay travelogues are there what is the meaning of travelog the travelogues basically means what travelogues means the records of travelers records of travelers okay apart from that what else do we have we have the edicts right edicts and inscriptions edicts and inscriptions okay so here what is the edicts and inscription basically the kings or the queens or the people in that time period they used to they used to inscribe they used to inscribe the writings on the wall of the you know houses pillars rocks and other stone or metallic surfaces stones or metallic surfaces so such type of special writings which are related to the related to the descriptions of uh, the you know king or activities of the king related to the right, related to any announcement or something on the stone rocks pillars right wooden plaques wooden plaques or the copper or other metallic plaques so all these things are called as the right they are called as edicts and inscriptions got it everyone now the most important part this topic is directly given in the right directly given in the significance right basically in the rs sharma that what is the significance of the ancient indian history that means why do we study the ancient indian history guys this topic right this topic may not be very much useful for the examination but this topic is ex extremely useful for developing the understanding of your subject in the mains examination in the mains examination 
there was a question from the culture from the culture part what was the question that discuss the discuss the elementary right elementary sim, right similarities similarities and differences guys this is not the exact language of the question but the meaning of the question that was exactly same it was probably uh, in 2018 or 2019 i'm not very sure about it but discuss the elementary similarities and differences right comparison of the prehistoric paintings okay prehistoric paintings with with modern paintings with modern paintings okay so now you have to you have to get a deep understanding of the context of the paintings that why do the human beings do the painting why do they do the painting or why do they paint so this is basically this is basically going to be clear once we get the idea of the cultural development so history tells us about the cultural development right it tells us about the early inhabitants and their life that how did they live suppose if we talk about uh, the bhim betka we get to see that in at bhim betka there are the paintings of the birds you know birds which are perching uh, birds perching on the ground right so that means probably there was the time when already the grains were already in the use or we see the uh, paintings where a few people are dancing collectively dancing together so this collective dance also indicates what it indicates that probably the people had started living together the people had started celebrating the occasions together that means the beginning of the social life had already be, uh, started so that is how we get to see the different aspects of the ancient history and we have a clear understanding clear idea about about the people the culture their society their language their script all right all these things for example you can have this look you can have a look on this particular uh, picture this indicates a person sitting in the yogic posture and let me tell you that it is different picture it is not the it is not the uh, yogic posture of lord shiva or pashupati it's not that it is a different picture it is a different picture here you have got some of the symbols some of the symbols okay probably a uh, fish or maybe a sign of u something like that here is a bull okay here is a bull so suppose if there are if there are lots and lots of uh, such stone plaques such stone seals and there we have the there we have the images of the bull what does it indicate it indicates that probably the bull was considered a sacred animal probably it was considered a sacred animal and not just that if we look at this particular animal it looks very very special animal it does not look like any ordinary animal many historians have called that this was probably a unicorn a unicorn however it appears that it appears that probably this might be a combination of two or different animals because harappans after observing a lot of harappan seals we have reached to the conclusion we have understood about their about their culture about their way of living and we have concluded that probably they were making the seals by combining the two different animals and their features right similarly similarly we have got several examples okay several examples in which the settlements have the settlements from the neolithic and other time period the settlements have the presence of you know graveyards with with the objects inside a pitcher inside a pitcher or inside a pot 
सो इन साइड पॉट इफ देर आर ऑब्जेक्ट रिलेटेड टू द लाइफ ऑफ अ पर्सन विच मीन्स वट कैन वी कंक्लूड बाय दिस नॉलेज वट कैन वी कंक्लूड अबाउट द कल्चर ऑफ दैट पीपल वी कैन कंक्लूड दैट सच पीपल दे यूज टू दे यूज टू यू नो बिलीव इन द राइट पॉस्थ्यूमस लाइफ और बिलीव इन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ आफ्टर द डेथ और प्रोबेबली दे वर नॉट अवेयर अबाउट एनी थिंग कॉल्ड एज डेथ एनी थिंग दैट कैन बी दैट कैन बी बिलीव फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस पिक्चर ओके दिस पिक्चर शोज यू द डिफरेंट सिंबल्स राइट डिफरेंट सिंबल्स एंड दिस सिंबल्स एक्चुअली दे आर कनेक्टेड विथ द इजिप्शियन सिविलाइजेशन इजिप्शियन सिविलाइजेशन एंड लेट मी टेल यू दैट दे आर यूज टू बी अ पैटर्न इन द सिंबल्स ऑफ है ना विच आर यूज हियर एंड दिस पैटर्न हैज बीन डी कोडेड it has been decoded from these patterns only we are able to understand the life and the details of the history of the egyptian civilization similarly the history that proves the unity in diversity of india unity in diversity of india is proven by history right for example for example india has been constituted by several ethnic and cultural groups like pre aryans indo aryans greeks scythians huns turks India has been the home to several adventing or incoming tribes and till today there are lots and lots of people who are coming into India some of the indians are going out as well so basically our culture has become a synthesized culture a synthesized culture a pluralistic culture pluralistic culture right so whenever you get a question related to the indian culture mind it that you have to consider that the examiner wants to listen that india is a pluralistic culture what is the meaning of pluralistic culture once again everybody pluralistic culture means that there are multiple cultural features present in the land of india which are obviously not the property of any specific culture any specific group of people okay several ancient cultures have shaped the indian languages phonetics lexicons like indo aryan tamil and munda cultures for example if you understand uh, that vedic texts rigveda yajurveda etc they are in the sanskrit that's very good but if you will learn history then you will realize that the vedas also contain several terminologies which belong to the belong to the munda group of languages that is that is austro asiatic right austro asiatic group of languages okay so the austro asiatic group of languages how are they how are they present in the vedas which means that probably the vedic people they might be having some connection with the mundari group of people some connection with the dravidian group of people right so such type of things they lead to the conclusion that unlike we think that uh, the vedic culture is completely secluded and the other parts of the country where the tribal culture is flourishing that is completely different it is not like that our culture is a composite culture it is a composite culture all right the cultural growth and development has been contributed by different groups different different ethnicities and varieties of people in india interrelated religious philosophies political and territorial formations and the strive to expand across the subcontinent in the entire ancient and medieval history you will find the efforts of different rulers to capture the entire subcontinent which clearly indicates that all the people even in the ancient history the kings and the different dynasties they were aware they were aware that india is a single geographical political cultural unit if not political then definitely geographical and cultural unit is there right not just that if you observe that more or less more or less whichever ruler in the ancient history or the medieval history more or less whichever ruler tried to expand their kingdom they were somehow trying to achieve the 
natural geographical boundaries which are present in the northeast the himalayan assam region assam himalayas in the northwest the kabul valley hindu kush region suleiman kirthar region in the southern area the nilgiris right so these natural boundaries they were actually the target of almost every king or the emperor who was trying to expand the kingdom so that clearly tells us that india despite having the diverse diverse dynastical politics despite having the diverse political history the factor of unity is the singular geographical identity that india had okay in fact let me tell you that even the literary text like the vishnu puran like the vishnu puran describes that the land of bharat varsh is that right is that in the north of which lies himalayas and the south of which lies lies the great ocean right so this is how they used to tell about the indian subcontinent they were aware that this place is a common place this entire stretch of the land is a common stretch of the land and contains the mountains and the oceans now concepts like the varna and the caste and the languages like prakrit sanskrit and epics right and epics like mahabharat ramayan guys there are a lot of things which share the common existence in indian subcontinent i am not going to tell you about just negative things like caste or uh, uh, the language the, the linguistic differences but some of the positive things are also there if you will study the ancient history and you will understand the culture of the country you will realize that the most ancient dance practices the folk stories the sculpture art the statue construction all these things what do they have in common they have the common themes related to the ramayan related to the mahabharatas related to the puranas similar type of uh, common themes have been found for example the varah incarnation of lord vishnu it is represented as far as in the karnataka in the madhya pradesh in the assam as well as in the rajasthan region right not just that not just that varah mool right varah mool is the place in jammu kashmir which is currently called as the baramula right baramula that was the place of varah mool which means the varah temple was existing even in jammu and kashmir and at the same time in the pallava kingdom in the pallava kingdom of tamil nadu region their capital was kanchi in tamil nadu the pallavas had constructed a mandap called as varah mandap what is mandap a rock cut rock cut uh, you can say you know uh, enclave or a temple like structure so this cultural feature is telling you right completely and in, uh, in a very clear way that the different places they were somehow in some point of time connected with the common cultural identity which indicates the unity in diversity of india all right everyone unity in the diversity of india got it everybody now so these are the maps which tell you the lang right linguistic differences or the linguistic distribution of the country you can see here these are the dravidian group of languages but the ironical situation is that in the sri lankan islands in the sri lankan islands dravidian languages are present in the northern area in the southern part of sri lanka which is very very far away from the indo aryan groups there is the presence of singhali language which belongs to the indo aryan group what does it indicate it indicates that right, it indicates that the people speaking the indo aryan languages probably they traveled and they reached to the sri lanka and then they settled in the sri lankan island and later on due to the continuous connection with the tamil region in the northern sri lanka we have the dominance of the dravidian linguistic speakers but the rest of the sri lankan island that was having that was having the singhalese speakers which is a language of the indo aryan group of languages okay similarly you can have this right you can have this austro asiatic austro asiatic languages all right which means 
the austro asiatic languages are connected with the south east asian languages south east asia right now so we can have a clear understanding that the indian subcontinent the indian subcontinent contains the linguistic varieties as well as the cultural diversity despite it it has the common connections to establish it as a nation now this is about the description of the languages once uh, the class is over you can see this particular thing in the recording that uh, how is this uh, you know how is this indo aryan language species that is going to be divided into the different groups like uh, in the western hindi eastern hindi nepali then here in the eastern part the bengali assamese bihari odia right so probably the entire group of languages in the northern india eastern india western india all of them belong to the indo aryan language family got it hello sonu now so what is the relevance of our past to our present i think we have understood it very clearly that the difference between the clamor of the ancient glory and the efforts behind its restoration so suppose nowadays people are trying to push our country towards the ancient systems so we have to understand the difference that we do not have to bring the ancient practices back in our history but we have to conserve the identities we have to conserve the identities conserve the features of our culture for example yagya yagya ab it does not mean that yagya was present in our ancient history so that we should start doing yagya every day no but if yagya was present in our history then we must preserve that practice we must understand the significance of that practice this is more important for the people of today instead of simply copying the practices or the rituals of the ancient times we need to understand the logic behind that the purpose behind that and we need to preserve that valuable cultural heritage i hope you are getting the point here everybody are you getting the point now <clears throat> to analyze the pros and cons of our past without a bias on the socio economic and cultural fronts so here we have that we need to understand the past of our country without having any bias that this was done only by hindus or the entire country belong only to the buddhist or only to the jains whenever we come across any news that this particular place was excavated the people start claiming that this was originally a buddhist place this was originally a hindu place this was originally a something others place these things are useless these are useless things what is more essential that we need to understand that what was that thing which we have found out what was the common cultural feature of that particular excavation this is going to help us in understanding the history instead of instead of fighting over that now similarly if we talk about the socio economic and cultural fronts there are many practices which were existing in the past of our country for example sati system for example the child marriage we have come over that practice we have completely you know left those practices so it does not mean that in order to replicate the past uh, past practices of our country we start doing those mistakes once again so history tells us that how to evolve how to develop further in our culture in our growth to understand the surviving cultural elements and their positive as well as the negative consequences for a progressive society what is the meaning of that some of the cultural practices some of the cultural practices they are still existing in our country for example the gender discrimination gender discrimination this is a cultural practice which belongs to the medieval time period medieval time period or you can say the early medieval to the proper medieval so when i am saying medieval time period or ancient time period that means there is definitely some classification which is done and we have continued that practice even today even today similarly we have continued the practices like caste system caste system that is also going to create a lot of trouble in the modern time period okay so the socio cultural discrimination 
which are right which are related to right, socio cultural discriminations which are related to the historical background they must be abolished if we have the complete understanding of the historical development of those features got it to understand our evolution as a society and the root cause of the present obstacles guys the biggest benefit of uh, history the biggest relevance of the history at present that is to understand the root cause of any problem for example suppose we talk about the kashmir problem we talk about the kashmir issue or we talk about the relations between india and nepal then we must go into the historical context in order to get the better understanding of these issues these issues right similarly if we want to resolve the problems such as the communalism such as the polarization between hindus and muslims then we must need to go into the details of these problems got it everyone so you can see the varna system and similarly you can see the caste system in varna system only brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra in the caste system you can have the brahman kshatriyas vaishya and there are lot of people in the shudras right peasant servants common people and the group of people called as untouchables outcast people who are not considered the part of the four varna system so caste system has a lot of differences with the varna system all these things we will be covering up in the vedic culture wala chapter and you can see this picture which indicates the which indicates the agony of the caste system here the person is giving the payment without touching without touching just from the above this indicates that even today we are having this cultural practice in existence that is creating a trouble in the society got it everyone now now this is the timeline of the history you can have a screenshot of this timeline so that you can understand it very well and it is actually showing a different basic idea from minus 4000 so minus 4000 means this is zero this is zero okay the birth of christ the birth of christ okay the birth of christ so whenever we are going on the left side from the birth of christ we call it as bce before common era whenever we are going to the right side of the birth of christ we are calling it as the common era or ce this is also called as bc that is before christ and this is also called as ad that is in the reign of christ in the rule of christ okay so this is how we have to be very very much careful now so this is actually giving a complete overview beginning from the stone age then bronze age then iron age then classical age medieval age and modern age okay everyone so this is the complete timeline of the indian historical ages indian historical ages got it everyone so here you can have the different dynasties and we can see that we can see that most of the dynasties they started developing in the iron age in the iron age and after that continuous developments they are taking place got it everybody why was the caste system started because of the because of the different practices different you know different uh, you can say professions which were in the existence when we will study about the gupta age then i will explain it very much detail in a very much detail manner that why was the caste system formulated okay everyone so that is all in today's session and i hope that all of you got the clear understanding of this chapter so tomorrow we are going to start with the prehistoric period that is the stone age so all of you have to share this session and make it sure that at least 50 people are live in the class okay so only when the 50 people are live in the class then i will understand it i will consider it that there is some substantial thing that we are studying through this particular lecture got it everyone so if you are preparing for the 2024 examination so here it is what you have to do you just have to use this code asr live in order to enroll for the batches and let me tell you that you are not going to not going to get anything right anything better than this at this particular cost of rupees 29999 all right now purushottam is saying that uh, this is very irrelevant what is irrelevant purushottam can you please tell me what is irrelevant 
because uh, the chapter that we discussed right the chapter which we discussed today that chapter will give you right will give you the understanding of the complete historical context at the same time the upcoming chapters are essential for the upcoming chapters are essential for the entire complete uh, syllabus of coverage so that's very very important now so thank you so much everyone for watching it and uh, the enter the ppt and all those things the pdf etc that will be present that will be given to you in the uh, groups okay so you can join the telegram group by using this particular id that is uh, at the rate abhishek singh sir po okay so that is that is the telegram group that you can join so thank you so much everybody take care bye bye and have a great day ahead let's meet tomorrow till then jai hind and thanks a lot